All right, welcome back to episode four. And the natural progression for the next episode is how to cut a documentary scene. Hey, my name is Thanasis Petrakis, and I'm a director of photography in the sports documentary world. I started out in this business as a production assistant, then an editor, and a producer, and transitioned into working full-time filming. I've worked on 30 for 30s, NBA Finals, all types of projects in the last 15 plus years. This educational content is designed to give back knowledge and help people on a similar journey. It's not going to be camera jargon in technical terms, it's practical information that will help you learn how to work in this field. So in the first episode, we went over the settings for a camera, we went over how to light an interview, and we went over how to film a documentary scene in the field. So now we're gonna take all those skills that we learned and bring it into the edit. So we are gonna take an episode from the Dominate series that we did with Gonzaga signee Dominic Harris, and we're gonna go to episode nine, and we're gonna use the beginning of this episode as an example on how to cut a scene. So we'll use an actual documentary scene and we'll also use an interview and we'll show how we start to tell the story of the beginning of this episode and what we shot in the field. Now the first thing in the post-production process is getting your footage from the camera onto your edit system, onto your computer, your hard drives, whatever it is. That process is rather easy. For my setup, I use what is called a shuttle hard drive. It holds a lot of footage and I organize my footage within that hard drive and start to create a filing system of my footage. Now when it comes to organizing your footage, I like to make a master bin. Then within that bin, I like to organize it so I will have an imports folder. I'm gonna make a footage folder, I'm gonna make a music folder, and I'm gonna put a zero in front of all those folders so that they come to the top when I, when I organize it in Finder. And now, as you could guess, I'm gonna go into footage and now create another folder. And I'm gonna lead off with the date, the year first, because it helps with organizing when you get into the double digit months. So I'm gonna start off with the year, then I'm gonna go the month, and then the day. And then I'm gonna give the card number so it stays in sequence order, the camera it was shot on, and a short description of the shoot. One or two words. So I'm gonna take the same organization I used for organizing the footage on the drive and create that same structure in my project. So in my project now, I'm gonna have the imports, I'm gonna have a music folder, I'm gonna have a footage folder, and then the new one I'm gonna have is called a sequence folder. And that's where I'm gonna drop all my sequences. Zero sequences goes in there. I also like to have my footage, that way I could put, if I have a whole bunch of footage, it's just in that one folder, it's not just gonna be all over the place. Z music, so it will stay at the bottom, and I'll put all my music in there, and I go zero imports. Now what imports is, is maybe you have a picture you need to use, or maybe you have a sound effect of audio, maybe you have something you downloaded off of YouTube. Um, anything that's gonna be this miscellaneous stuff that you have to bring into your project, I like to put that in my imports folder. Okay, now the first thing I do once I have a project is I'm gonna start with a sequence. Now, as we've talked about, what you want your sequence to be is the same frame rate that you shot your project in. So if you shot it in 24 frames a second, your sequence should probably be in 24 frames a second. As well, if you shot in 30 frames a second, your sequence should be 30 frames a second. File, new sequence. Again, we're in Adobe Premiere. Now, I'll go with just an Ari, 1080 standard 23.976 which is 24 frames a second and that's what I'm gonna pick and right away it's gonna make me a sequence now the first part of my editing process what I was learned 
is called the string out process. Now the string out process a lot of times might be the production assistant, it might be the assistant editor, but someone has to go through all the footage that was shot and start to string it out on our sequence or on our timeline. Now when you string it out, you're basically just plopping all the footage down and keeping the best stuff. And I go through the whole shoot and I lay it out chronologically and rank basically my clips. I like to use the different video tracks to rate my footage. So if I'm gonna keep something, the first video level is it's good enough to stay. The second video level is it's a really good element. It's probably gonna make the piece. And then the third video track I save for this has to make it, even if we have to create a scene around it, this is making the piece. All right, which brings us to our next step, which is storyboarding. And there's storyboarding on paper and there's storyboarding on your sequence, which is basically just starting to edit your draft. Storyboard on paper could have been the first process of this whole thing. It really depends when you have your shoots and when you know what you're gonna shoot where you could really start to plot out your story. For this Dominate episode, we kind of are filming it as it goes along, so we'll put in things into the storyboard as they come up. For this, we're gonna focus just on the cold open. Now for the cold open, what a cold open is, it starts the show right away with no music, just out of nowhere, just starts the show. So that's what's considered a cold open. After the cold open ends, it goes into the post-produced open, where you see it with music and graphics. You've seen every show uh, do it. Uh, Saturday Night Live has made it famous in terms of where the host will start out doing a skit, then they'll say live from New York at Saturday Night Live, that's the cold open. Then they go into the post-produced open, and then when they come out, they do the monologue with the host, and that's the start of the show. So for our Dominate series, it goes with a cold open, then it goes into a post-produced open, and then it starts the show with the first scene, and the show begins and it runs all the way till it ends. That's kind of the structure that we go with. So our storyboard follows that. Now the first thing we're gonna do in the cold open is touch on what we strung out, Dom's last regular season game. So we've dumped our footage, we've organized our hard drive, we've brought that footage into the project, we've organized that project, we've created our string out, Right, All this process that we've done, all this organization, we haven't even started cutting yet. Now, if you're just trying to do a quick project and knock it out for the next day, you're not going to go through this whole process, most likely. This is long-term storytelling and the importance of staying organized. That's why I'm going so detailed. We're at the stage where we finished our string out. We could look at this and know what footage is great, what footage is good, what footage we have to look at again, right? We look at it, we could see it, great moments here, great moments there on the third track, on the second track. We know that there's great moments here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show that it's the last regular season game. Then we're gonna come out of that and we're gonna touch the story of Dom's grandfather getting the chance to be at his last regular season game, which was an awesome moment. And we tell that story. So let's see how we're gonna do it. The first thing you're gonna do after your string out's done, and this is for a lot of things that you're gonna do when you're editing, is get used to doing this process right here, is duplicating a sequence and saving that sequence so you could always come back to it. We're gonna wanna mess this up, this beautiful string out that we took so long to do. So without doing that, without feeling like, oh my God, I hope I don't delete that clip, let's duplicate it so we could always go back to this. And now, instead of string out, I'm going to call it V1, as in version one, all right? V1, episode nine. Now in the same thing that you do with the string outs and duplicating them, at the very least, every new day you edit, you duplicate your sequence V1 to V2. You can do it by date, however you want to do it, but at the very least, duplicate your sequence every day. This way, you always have it. You're like, oh, I actually like the way I cut that section on Wednesday. 
create a new little folder called copies. That's what I do, zero copies, toss it inside the sequences folder. And now this way, say I wanna duplicate um, my string out again, boom, how easy is that? It's so worth it. I'm a lazy person and it's so worth it. So just do that for sure. That if you could take one thing away from this, duplicate your sequences. Okay, now we have our duplicated sequence. And I told you that sometimes when you get something on a, an element that says everything that you're trying to tell, you might build a scene around it. And that's what we're gonna do for the very open, which we call the cold open. Hey, dog, it's time to take over. Come on, now. All right, hey Dom, it's time to take over. Come on now. Just because of the way this works, and again, I've cut the episode, but this is how I did cut it, is I knew that I was gonna go from that moment to whatever Dom's best play was. And we go on track three to go find his best play, okay? Now, here's his best play. It's a dump. We bring that dunk to right after his dad says that. All right. And now, with two quick clips, and happen to be two of our best ranked clips, we have somewhat of the start of our episode and the meat of our basketball scene, so to speak. Hey, Dom, it's time to take over. Come on, Dom. Once I get their reactions, I go to his grandpa. His grandpa has a really nice reaction, a very sweet, genuine laugh, and he says, back in the days, now that's like perfect. So now we've connected everything in terms of the story. And on that point, I don't want to lose that audio, so I'll extend it. Drop a little dissolve. Maybe go all the way with that announcer up until the time he speaks. So now, perfect. So he's going to say back in the days, as soon as this announcer right here is done speaking, I'm going to raise his level up. Back in the days. Now you hear it, and we'll also subtitle it. Okay. Now we're going to keep building like this, right? I'm going to have to find an establisher to use. I think for this, just because the outside wasn't great, what I did is I used like a high establisher of the gym. It's not like an amazing shot, but what it does is it speaks to the fact that it's not that impactful of a game. For this series, there's been games where they're playing like, you know, star studded teams and it's big game and line. Like this wide shot will show that it's just an empty gym. Like it's already telling you that the game is not as important as something else that we're gonna show you. Because if this game was important, they're one of the top teams in the country. There'll be a lot more people there. Within that, I'm also probably gonna set up that it's the last game, maybe with words. Now also, you have to realize this next bite right here is a dead ball. It, so we can't go from, even if it's the exact not play, you can't go from action to that. It won't sync very well. It won't flow. There won't be continuity. So, you know, this will play a little better because it's a dead ball. You won't know exactly where Dom is on the court. You cut to the next shot. Hey Dom, it's time to take over. You don't know. Perfect. Time to take over. Guess what? He takes over. Okay, now. And I'll put them in there, so that's perfect, right? At this point in episode nine, the audience knows who these two guys are. That's Deontay, his brother, and his dad. Quick reaction to boom, now our new character. We'll probably have to put a, a lower third here for him. This is Dom's grandfather. We have him say, back in the days, right? It almost calls from you wanting to hear from him. Once he said that, you knew you had to go up and get what we have explained before in previous episodes of an OTF, an on-the-fly interview. Let's go find that in the string out. So again, the string out is on our timeline because we put it here. We're gonna scrub through and see how, there it is. Okay, so now let's listen to his soundbite. 
Well, I call it neat because... Uh, so we're going to listen to his interview and we're going to see what... He's the smallest one out of all the group. And see what he says is pertinent. You use what fits your story. He tells me stories about Dom as a kid, what he called him as a nickname, all these things. And you got to pick what part you're going to use. Now for this, we're going to chop up the bite. You already know you heard him say back in the day, so I'm gonna get a sound bite for him to reflect on what he meant by that. Obviously, we all know, but still you want the sound bite to accentuate that point that he meant it reminded of him playing in his old days as a youngster. So we're gonna cut this bite up. That dump was magnificent. And so I had flashbacks. It kind of reminded me of me when I was when they were they moving about the same height. I chopped down his bite, and I got his bite to basically this. That dunk was magnificent. That, I had flashbacks. That dunk was magnificent. I had flashbacks. Pretty simple. Now, okay. I had to ch okay. chop these this sections and add them together. Now, he said it. He just didn't say it as concise as this. That dunk was... Make it concise. That dunk was magnificent. I had flashbacks. I had flashbacks. Now that part I want on camera. So the other things that we edited, you can't have them on camera, otherwise it's gonna skip, right? It's gonna be like his face just skipping because we're jumping time. So you put that under the footage, right? You're hiding it underneath the footage. So it's gonna be his dunk reaction, back in the days, laughs. Okay, now we're gonna start his sound bite. All right, back in the days, right there. Drop that. That dunk was magnificent. I had flashbacks. Not bad. So now there's another part of the bite that I liked. It kind of reminded me of me when I was when it was his age. We were about the same height. Perfect. Now I can bring this on camera, but I would have to put footage in between there. Now I'm going to make this one continuous bite, so the next time I bring him on camera is going to say this part of the bite. It's a unique experience for a third generation uh, grandfather. Now this is not in order, right? This might have been the first. This might have been the first question, and this might have been the last question of the answer. How you cut up sound bites is almost like writing. You're just taking their sound bites and chopping it to say in a concise way of what they said. You do not want to disrepresent what they say. That is not what I'm trying to say. You want to stay true to what they say, but you want it to sound concise and you want it to flow with your footage. So you have to chop it up. That dunk was magnificent. I had flashbacks. Perfect, okay? It kind of reminded me of me. It kind of reminded me of me. When it was his age, we were about the same height. So now what we're looking for in this shot, and I'm, what I'm gonna go through my string out for, looking for, but in the field, I knew I had to get it, and you will the more you have experiences, and what I call this is a relationship shot, where they're in the same frame. Like, so far right now, we've shown a dunk, and we swung the camera to his grandfather. So you technically know they're in the same place, but you really don't because like there's no shots of them together. So this, what I had to do is I went to the other side of a court to get what I would call a relationship shot. And what I mean by relationship shot is really they're just in the same frame. And I couldn't pull that off being on the same side of the court as them. So I walked over to the other side of the court so that I could have that game action as a foreground. So I go on the other side of the court, the action starts, and now I have Dom, and I have them in the same frame, right? And now this is the cover shot that I'm going to use. And in my string out, I put it on the second level because it's an important shot. Is it the most beautiful shot in the world? No. Is it the hardest shot to achieve? No. But it takes thinking, it takes producing. You have to get them in the same frame and that's something that you might just sit in one angle the whole game and never pull that off. You have to move and you have to tell the story. So now I'm gonna take this shot, okay? And I'm gonna use this as my cover. Now we already have this string out saved, so I have no problem cutting that out of there and pasting it up here, okay? And now I'm gonna put this right over here and you'll see the impact that that shot is gonna have. So now, 
We'll drop the audio on the Nat sound. I had flashbacks. Okay. He kind of reminded me of me when I was. When so he's talking about Dom. I'm yeah, showing Dom. About the same height. And now it goes to him, and he's watching. For a third generation, our grandfather, Sid Gray. Really good. Really good because it puts you into that moment, and you're showing the audience what he's talking about. He says he reminds me of him, and we're showing the audience a shot of him looking at Dom. So obviously you could connect that he's thinking about seeing Dom. So, and, and, and reminiscing of his days as a player. All right, so we continue. Now he's Our going. Generation. Our grandfather, C. Grandson, to play. I wanted to play a pool. And... So now we're going to find one more bucket of Dom's while he's talking about Dom playing because he says that Dom reminds me of him. So. One, a bucket never hurts because it's going to show Dom as having success. And that's part of the show, right? You're trying to show that. Okay. He's watching him. And we're, again, we're going to cover up. We don't even need to cut up, to cover up all those bites, but we're still gonna do it. Lower the gnats under the sound bites slightly. I had flashbacks. So now let's see. So now we'll do a quick color correction, and I'm gonna show you how I do a quick color correction. I shoot this in log, okay? So I'm gonna go to, uh, I'm gonna drop a a LUT. Um, it's an FS7 LUT. It's actually an RE709 film look LUT, but it's for S Log 3, as you could say, which is what you shoot. Um, is what you shoot FS7 in is okay. is S Log. So now you can see the clip's a little orange. I'll find white, find white, click it with the white balance selector. Boom! You see that? Turn the picture into more of a natural color, of the correct color. Um, hit contrast, bring the blacks down a little bit, saturate it slightly, because the, the LUT has saturation on it. And just with those quick little commandments right there, you get a nice little look. And just to watch this scene down, because this is all within the same scene, I'm going to paste that LUT on the scene. We are gonna watch it down. All right, now here we go. Cerritos College, Norwalk, the date. Hey Dom, it's time to take over. Come on now. Let's go, let's go. Back in the day, that dump was magnificent. I had flashbacks. He kind of reminded me of me when I was, when it was his age. We were about the same height. It's a unique experience for a third generation. Our grandfather, see a grandson to play. I wanted to play pro, and I know Sean wanted to play, but he's got the, the right opportunity. And then we go right into the post-produced open, which we talked about before. So the cold open preceded that. So then we go right into the post-produced open. So the cold open set the stage. Last regular season game, 
Dom's dad's giving him motivation, and his grandfather's there to see while they're excelling and winning, right? We saw all positive. You're getting the sense that they're going to win the game. That's going to go into our post-produced open, and then we're going to come out, and we're going to be in the same scene, and you'll see that we start in the locker room here, and then we get into another layer of the story of Dom's grandfather being there. Now, since we filmed this, unfortunately, Dom's grandfather has passed away. We have expressed a lot of our thoughts and prayers to their family, to Sean Harris, his, uh, Dom's dad. That was his father. So um, obviously he meant a lot to their family and his legacy is going to live on um, within Dom, within Deontay, within Deshaun and, and Sean. Yeah. Well, I'm proud that you got a chance to see him. Yeah, oh, yeah. Too. You know what I mean? I did too. Yeah. I'm yeah. proud. And it becomes a really emotional moment and a really um, frozen in time moment that's going to be awesome for the family. And that's kind of what documentary filmmaking is all about is you're preserving these life moments as you're telling someone's story. It's like it's, it's, a, it's a really cool thing. And, and when you look at it from that macro sense, like you're doing a cool thing when you, when you are documenting someone's part of their life. And when you're putting it down on editing, that's when you're really making that story come to life. So that's what we just did right here. Um, I definitely urge you to go check out the Dominate series. Any questions, again, hit us up in the comments. Hit us up um, on IG. Again, the feedback has been great. We are gonna now sit back and wait for suggestions because that was like our four part like bread and butter series. Like that's the basics of kind of what we do. So the more feedback you give us, the more value we can bring to you guys, but we appreciate you watching and um, thank you very much, appreciate it.